Firstly, let me on behalf of the government of Maldives and its people welcome all the participants of the Youth Forum and Regional Consultative Meeting to the Maldives. I truly hope that your stay thus far has been a pleasant one in the sunny side of life, as we call it, in the Maldives. South Asia, unfortunately, has always been playing a catch-up with most other regions in terms of development. Economic growth and progress, predominantly political and democratic transitions have shunted our ability to realize our true potential. However, I stand before you today with renewed hope. SARC member states have unanimously decided on what needs to be done, and in that regard, rightly earmarked youth de development as the key to our future. I can safely say that the commitment to prioritizing adolescents and youth in our respective national and regional development agendas will be the stepping stone to the ensure, ensuring sustainable development and growth of our region. In this light, I think this is the opportune occasion to highlight the commitment of the Maldives government to what has now become a regional objective. With an influx of five times of the budget of previous years, the government of His Excellency President Yamin came with a promise to address the youth-related concerns that have sadly been neglected in the recent past. Since our government took office in late November last year, we have hit the ground running in the bid to tackle such concerns. During the first few months of this government, we have launched a nationwide effort to compile a registry of, registry of unemployed youth in the Maldives. So far, over, uh, over 10,000 youth seeking employment have registered enabling us to first time to accurately determine the number of unemployed youth which we have identified as the first step towards reducing the unemployment rate in the Maldives. We have also introduced several thematic sessions ranging from career guidance, counseling to interview skills. These sessions of course are being conducted laterally with monthly job fairs to match job seekers with the potential employers. We have found that young people on occasions needs a little nudge in the right direction to ensure that they can hold on to jobs for a prolonged period of time and build careers around doing what they love to do. In that regard, we also are mindful of the current generation's fondness for arts as part of my ministry's broad mandate we are aiming to unearth and encourage many talented artists throughout the Maldives and have designed courses in fields ranging from dance, photography, and arts without compromising our rich and diverse cultural roots. Ladies and gentlemen, the Maldivian government's commitment is not limited to just ambitious plans. We have also drafted a youth bill which will encompass all areas related to youth in order to ensure that the rights of young Maldivian are protected by law. We, are, we hope to pass this key legislation essential to our efforts when the newly elected parliament convenes on 28th of this month. The future of our youth cannot be assured without health and with, and with that in mind, and with the kind and generous assistance of UNFPA, relevant interlocutors, including my ministry, have come together and drafted a national health strategy for the youth. We are hoping to get it endorsed by the cabinet in the coming few weeks. Once adapted, this strategy will address, amongst others, drug abuse, which is the main challenge facing Maldivian youth today. Distinguished participants, the year 2014 has been dubbed by the government as the year of sports and youth infrastructure development in Maldives. True to our electo electoral pledge, the government is looking to establish a sports arena in every island with a population of over 2,000 or more in the first year. Fully equipped with wide array of both indoor and outdoor facilities and also facilities for 
to conduct youth development programs. Such long overdue sports infrastructure and youth development infrastructure in the atolls is pivotal to the government's aim to encourage Maldivian youth to utilize their leisure time in a more productive manner. As I have been barely able to scratch the surface of the Maldives government's unyielding commitment to the development of youth, due to the limited time available for me today, I would like to stress that these plans or visions of the Maldivian government have been designed to ensure that we are able to produce a generation of responsible young people, promote youth leadership, bring forward fresh and youth ideas in order to resolve the many challenges facing our tiny little island nation. It was once said, we cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. But I firmly believe together we can do both. It is my sincere wish that all member states mirror the commitment shown by the Maldives government to prioritizing adolescents and youth in our respective national and regional development agendas. I would like to conclude my address by expressing my sincere thanks to UNFPA, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the ever diligent staff of our ministry, Ministry of Youth and Sports, and of course, the Youth Volunteer Corps for the hard work they have put in to make all this possible. I wish the participants best of luck for the rem uh, remainder of this sit down and I hope that the productive deliberations of the meetings will lead to the finalizing of youth charter and take us one step closer to ensuring uh, a prosperous future for the entire region, SAC region. Once again, thank you. On behalf of the Government of Maldives, it gives me great pleasure to join the Minister for Youth and Sports to extend a very warm welcome to the distinguished delegates and youth representatives to the Maldives. I believe the outcome of this meeting will pave the way for far-reaching positive impacts on the lives of young people in South Asia. The youth of today represent the biggest generation of youth in human history. There are at present over 1.2 billion youth globally. 62% of them live in Asia and 26% live in the Sark region alone. The region is currently in a critical demographic period where the number of working age adults exceeds the children and the elderly. This increased population of youth as mentioned by previous speakers, provides a demographic bonus. It provides an excellent opportunity for accelerated and robust development of our region. The benefits of this critical period, however, can only be achieved if the youth are empowered with the education, skills, and opportunities to positively contribute to the advancement of themselves and their societies. The reasons for placing youth at the very center of the development agenda are extremely compelling. We must ensure their meaningful participation in the development process. We must promote the health, well-being, and potential rights of all young people. And most importantly, we must include them in the design and the implementation of policies and programs, especially those that affect their lives. In fact, youth have to own these policies and programs and be the agents of change. The vision of President Yamin Abdul Qayyum is encapsulated in the slogan, Youth, Economy and Hope. And this clearly spells out the focus of our government on empowering youth. Distinguished delegates, Ever since its inception, SARC has continued to attach primary importance to the issues related to youth. The Ministerial Conference on Youth in South Asia, held in May in 1994 in the Maldives, focused on the broad theme, youth and development. In fact, as the previous speaker mentioned, the year 1994 was designated 
as the Sark Year of Youth. Then in 1995, the Sark Youth Resolution was adopted to advance the overall development of youth in the region. Sark Youth Camps are being held periodically on a designated theme with a view to promote cultural interaction amongst the youth, with the most, most recent being held in India in February 2013 on the theme Youth as Ambassadors in Global Partnership for Development. And the Sark Youth Award Scheme was instituted in 1996 to provide recognition to young talents and encourage development of youth in the region. Since then, 11 Sark Youth Awards have been given to deserving young people from different member states, and I'm very pleased to note that a young Maldivian man was achieved the award in 2011. Distinguished delegates, today, as we move towards finalizing the Sark Youth Charter, I believe that this charter and its action plan will be an exemplary regional framework where the true aspirations, hopes, and dreams of South Asian youth themselves are reflected. I am pleased that the fruitful discussions were held during the youth workshop yesterday. The energy, enthusiasm, and fresh ideas of our youth will surely provide the right inspiration and impetus for the delegations as they begin their government consultations shortly. I believe that this youth charter, with its key five areas of focus, enabling environment, gender equality, education and skills development, employment and health provides a sound foundation for the South Asian nations, nations where efforts of the member states will complement each other in promoting the health, well-being and potential rights of all young people, male and female. Distinguished delegates, the estimated population of Maldives currently stands at 350,000 of this, over 50% comprise people under the age of 25 years, and the largest cohort, about 25% of the population, is between 15 to 25 years. The rapid changes in our traditional lifestyles, attitudes, and values have enormous implications and potential, especially for this young population. Their lives are subject to currents and forces very different to those experienced by their parents. While they are faced with numerous opportunities and access, the risks and dangers that can threaten their well-being has also increased. The government of Maldives recognizes the importance of empowering youth and officially started the development of youth activities here in Maldives in August 1980 with the establishment of the Youth Council by the then President, Mamun Abdul Kayu. This very productive beginning for youth-centered development programs, since then, we have made significant progress. A comprehensive national youth policy was launched in 2003, which addressed key areas of education, employment, urban and rural disparities, housing, family, health, environment, crime and delinquency, and youth participation. Today, as mentioned by the Honorable Minister, a legislative framework Maldives Youth Bill has been drafted and it is in the process of being finalized. However, against these achievements, challenges faced by the youth in the Maldives and youth living elsewhere in the world, as in our region, has increased manifold. Distinguished delegates, investing in the youth is investing in the future. They are the leaders and the decision makers of tomorrow. They are the ones to shape the destiny of our region and the world in the coming years. We cannot deny them their rights, opportunities, or the resources that will enable them to play this important role. We need to ensure their active participation and ensure that their voices are heard. We must make youth policies a priority. We must protect the rights of youth through legislative and administrative measures. We must eliminate discrimination against the youth based on race, religion, caste, class, or disability. We must eradicate violence and abuse of young people, especially girls and other marginalized groups. We must not let our youth be deprived from an education or access to decent work. We must invest in the health and well-being of the youth. Tomorrow, as the Sark Youth Charter is finalized, 
Let that be a significant moment in the history of South Asia, where we pledge to do all we can and play our part in the making of history by our young people. Let us pledge to invest in the future of South Asia. I would like to thank UNFPA especially for supporting this important initiative, and I wish you all success in your deliberations. Thank you once again.